Hello and welcome to Say Hi to the Future, Ingenious Thinkers, a podcast aimed at highlighting the human side of ingenuity. With me today is Perry Knoppert, founder of the Octopus Movement and Brain Forest Alliance, two groundbreaking initiatives that aim to drive acceptance and awareness of the awesome abilities of atypical thinkers and empower them to tackle the trickiest challenges of today and tomorrow. Perry, welcome. Thank you, Ken. Wow. And that means this is very fancy for just saying I like weirdos, to be honest. <laughs> That's cool. So it, it's what I was going to ask you for all those words, what is an atypical thinker? Well, you know, I don't know what an atypical thinker is, but it's I just like weird people. I like people that don't fit in the box, whatever that may be. But I've always been fascinated by people who do things differently or just slightly different or a little bit weird like myself. And, you know, I just call that the atypical thinker. It's it's people who do things differently. Maybe that's it. So, Perry, what makes you weird? What have you done that's... Uh... <laughs> Many things. <laughs> well, the weirdest thing I've done and the biggest thing that was weird in my life is that I gave away everything and became homeless. And that was pretty weird. And a lot of people around me judged me for that, for being a little bit too weird on that perspective. Lots of things were happening and all of a sudden everything came together and I took the decision, you know what, you take it all, you take it all. And, and I'm done. I want to explore this. And I've always had this fascination for disconnecting everything, not just a little bit, but going really deep. And maybe it's my midlife crisis. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I was 45 when I did this, um, 49 now, but it, it changed my life. And I, and I wasn't doing that. I want to share this with you. I wasn't doing that because I wanted to change my life. I, I did that because I was curious the setting was there, someone was not happy with me, then someone else was not happy with me, and I thought, where am I, and, and what is going on? I need to let go of everything, and that was pretty weird, but I also wear nail polish. You cannot see it very well, but I have glitters on my nails. I What, what else is weird? I, I think things differently, and I sometimes share that with people. So what did you learn from giving everything away? Many things. But the most important thing for me is that it doesn't change anything. We would think that when you lose everything or when you give away everything, your life will fall apart, right? That everything goes to wherever corner you want to address here. Mm -hmm. um, it's not true. Nothing changes. It here, you as you stays the same. So your thinking doesn't change. So, and if, if reality is thinking, then your reality doesn't change, even though you don't have a house anymore. And in my case, I just had a bag and my dog and I couldn't see my kids and that was it. But mm -hmm. still inside, nothing changed. And what changed was the people around me, outside of me, people judging me, people looking at me like you, hmm, loser you horrible person my ex-wife wanted to kill me like what the hell are you doing my parents are like no get a job get a life you have to take care of your three kids you cannot do this but also people at government i changed I, I went from belgium to the netherlands when i was homeless and my ex-wife went back to the netherlands she saw the opportunity to go back to the netherlands like hey he's homeless anyway so let's go for it and I went to the government to ask for help. I like, I want to see my kids. I'm homeless. I don't have anything. Can you do anything for me? That's interesting. You know, they look at you like you're a big loser and it's, it's horrible. And even though the law was that they had to support me, they didn't support me. And when I was addressing the law to them, I was kicked out of the office with security, not because I was, you know, constantly saying, but this is my right. I just shared with that lady. I don't think this is the way to do it. I think there is law and it's here. How does this work? And then she called security immediately. And I was kicked out because I'm homeless. I'm nothing. So here it doesn't change. The thinking remains the same. Who you are stays the same. 
and just the outside world changes and that changed my life it it made everything different so when do you decide to get a home again what's that process because you you are inside now with a very nice microphone and and headphones on i'm i'm back not back on track i live in a house beautiful house in the forest i've founded this global nonprofit I still don't have an income and I'm very pleased with that. I'm running this nonprofit and it, life is absolutely wonderful. But after seven months of not seeing my kids and misery and everybody looking down on you, I restarted my life living. Welcome back to the Leadership Forum, a space where corporate leaders share insightful takes on the human side of ingenuity. I'm Sakib Vali, explorer. Say hi to the future. Is that I received a phone call, a, an email from someone. I didn't have a cell phone. Later on, a best friend of mine gave me a, an iPhone. He said, I want to be able to reach you. So here's your phone. And I drive my mother's car. You know, it's it's wonderful. And I got an email and a good friend of mine in China called me. And, and he said, I think you need my help. And I wasn't sharing this story on social media. This was my story. So I was living it by myself. And he called me and he said, Perry, I don't know what's going on, but it feels to me that I, that you need my help. So thanks to him, I was able to rent a place and see my kids again. And it's thanks to that connection that everything changed. I didn't ask for help. I was asking for help, but with the wrong people. And a very good friend just picked it up. I don't know how, but that was the connection. And he changed my life. That That, that is remarkable. And it's... Um... You never know where good things are going to come from, do you? No. And, and when you're asking for help, you're drawing conclusions. And I've learned that that's not the way to go. Because if you if you create a conclusion, like I need to ask this person, because I had a very good friend. He was an investor. I was like, he has enough money, right? He, mm -hmm. he can help me to reset my life and change. So I made the conclusion that he could help. But that closes all doors, you know, it, it eliminates the possibilities because he said no, and I was disappointed. And, and, and I thought it was not fair. But why do I think it's not fair? It's fair for him to say that he didn't want to do it, right? So yeah. that whole system of creating conclusions and patterns and, and thinking about things how they should be, you know, that's our linear world. This is, hey, this guy has enough money, so he's able to help me. And he's saying no, so he's an asshole. No, he's not. And and mm -hmm. that triggered everything to me. And that's how I ended up creating the Octopus Movement, because that was awesome. That was beautiful. Don't do that. Help can, go, can come from corners that you're not expecting. And I think it's coming almost always from the corner you're not expecting it to come from. So Perry, um, some people aren't watching, some will be listening. So octopus movement, I'm staring at um, a microphone with a picture of an octopus. And I believe there's a few behind you. I'll call them a series of octopi. I can't really tell. W what is that about? <laughs> so after being homeless for seven months, during the homelessness, I was interviewing weird people because that was my fascination, right? And I still had my laptop. So every time I was staying with a friend or, or family members, I would be in the guest room or on the floor or in the living room or in the corner or in the garage on my laptop interviewing people. And, and after seven months, I was sitting in that house that I was renting and I was thinking, what am I doing now? I survived homelessness and I did well. I didn't have anything, but I mm -hmm. discovered that you can survive that no matter what, you know, you're there. You can survive everything. And I thought, what am I going to do now? Because in the beginning of my homelessness, I wanted to get a job. Of course, that's the first response. Like I'm homeless, I need to get money, I can rent a house. And I was checking everything out and my resume looks like the rainforests, right? It's a jungle. I've done so many different things. Nobody wants to hire me because they don't know who I am and what I do. So I didn't get a job. And I'm so happy that I didn't get a job because this is what I needed to do. And after seven months, I was thinking, so what's next? If everything is possible, what do I want to do? And I wanted to do two things. I wanted to be an artist because I love that. We don't know what art is. So we, we can't agree on the definition of art. 
So being an artist is the space where I want to be. You know, it can mean everything. And the other thing was, after interviewing 120 weird, fascinating people, they were all saying the same thing. If only people would understand me a little bit better, I would be able to do so much more, or I could change things, or I can have an impact. I love that. If if they can, if people can understand me just a little bit more, that that's amazing. And so, can, can I just stop you there for a second and say, yep, you're 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 sleeping people's couches, sitting on their floor. Where do you find these hundred and twenty people? Where where do you start? LinkedIn. It's very simple. You go to LinkedIn and you have a plan. Is that a common search? Weird people on LinkedIn? Weird or? people. Well, <laughs> it, it takes one to know one, you know? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so can if if you're the bottom line is if if your brain is weird, you recognize other weird people very easily. I can see a, a LinkedIn profile and I already have a sense of this is a weird one or not. So it's very simple. I would just scan LinkedIn. And I would see profiles that interested me. And I was having a gut feeling of this might be a nonlinear thinker. Send a message. Hey, I want to interview you. And, and most people want to be interviewed. Most people want to tell their story. Most people want to talk and, and share what they're thinking, especially the weird ones. So that was easy to connect to beautiful okay. people. Yeah. And that's how it started. And I was thinking if they just need a little bit more of understanding, then I will create a global nonprofit to help them and to create more understanding. Because the world, during that not, during that homelessness, I was standing in the living room and I was thinking all of a sudden, it's so clear to me now. And someone mm-hmm. said to me, what, Perry? And I said, I have no idea, but something is becoming very clear. And it took me a few weeks to connect the dots and and realize that I have a very nonlinear brain and I live in a linear world, which is fine. But then I was thinking, but we all have a nonlinear brain. And some of us have a little bit more nonlinear brain than others. Where's this all coming from? So that was my curiosity. I was thinking, let's create a nonprofit and create this awareness. And I think if we bring these very nonlinear thinkers together, we can create an impact. We can do something. Hey, I'm a father of three kids. I want to make sure my kids are fine. I want to make sure my grandkids are fine. And to be honest, we're f***ing up the planet a little bit here and there. And it would be cool if we could do something. And I have this strong feeling and, and urgency that I that I see these people that are awesome, but the system, the linear network, doesn't recognize them fully. And I thought, I can change that. Maybe. Maybe I'm just ridiculous. But that's what I thought. And I started with 50 people, 120 of them I interviewed, 50 of them said, yeah, that's interesting. We will join. And now it's three and a half years later. I have over 8,000 members in 94 countries. And we've created a whole global system of the octopus movement. So, yeah. What does it do? Like, what are these 8,000 members do they swim around with other octopi so we have we have get togethers we have we meet other octopi every other week and and we're growing the human mycelium i have to explain that in the beginning people were saying oh that's you're building a cool community and i heard the word community as like no it doesn't sound good to me i don't know what it is but it doesn't sound good and i was thinking about it And for me, a community is you go into a community, you have a badge, there are rules, and and you can leave the community, and maybe the community is where you live. So as soon as you move houses, you're out of that community or whatever. But it it brings people together within rules. And I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I want to create a global movement where there is a network of people where there are no rules. Everybody's invited. Everybody can can join. If it resonates, it resonates. So that's the human mycelium. I was watching a documentary of Paul Stamets. And, you know, the point I'm making is, is he's he was telling me about the mycelium in nature. And it, it got to me. Like, this is 
this is what it means to me. So that human mycelium is the octopus movement. People are connecting with each other. Some of them are founding members. Some of them are just swimming around. And another big thing, what we do is a huge passion of mine. I was thinking these people can change the world. How are we going to do that? Most of them are saying, if they only understand me a little bit better, I could do so much more. I want to give that space to them. So I've created a think tank. First year, I messed up completely. I had all these nonlinear thinkers together, and they were all talking, all ideas, and nothing happened. And then after a year, I created a system, well, what we use today, and I'm super proud of it because it's 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 a kind of nonlinear black box that is operating in the world, and people from all over the world join that us in that black box, and within 50 minutes, we run the whole think tank. It goes super fast. And there are 40 people involved, 40 weird people. Normally, you don't have these people within your company or organization. And, and we dive into a topic and I recreate the question. So if a company or, or ourselves or an organization comes to us with like, this is our question, then that's not the question we're asking in the think tank. We create different questions, different angles, do a think tank. And within 50 minutes, we have like 320 ideas and we bring that all together and then i have a whole team of writers and intelligent people that we bring everything together and write white papers with solutions and new ideas so we're we're masters of different thinking to be honest and it's it's awesome and i'm i'm super proud of it and i just got a letter from from nasa we're working with them and we're doing a think tank with them as well so it's it's not the smallest in the world that is deciding to go for the octopus moving understands the power of nonlinear thinking. And a lot of people know that we need to use different thinking to survive the next decade. There's a lot going on. We have mm -hmm. AI in the world. The world is changing. And if we don't change our thinking, if we don't approach things differently, nothing will change. And there's the opportunity, I think. So that's what the nonprofit does to create a voice for all these wonderful people who have brilliant ideas. So to get to the linear just a little bit, I completely appreciate the, the non-linear or atypical thinking and coming up with very different ideas and perspectives. But for a company or a NASA, I, I'm guessing there's got to be some filter, though, to, to understand your top three ideas and why they are relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, cause I'm sure you're not, I, well, I'm not sure I'm, I should just ask. I mean, you're not, are, are you handing NASA 300 diverse ideas? No, with no, 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 okay. no, no. <laughs> so what, so these are the ingredients and, and I work together with a team of very intelligent people that are very interesting. One of them is my chief of, of critical thinking, Anshar. I think he has an IQ of 170 and he's on the spectrum. He's just awesome. And we brainstorm about all these different angles and we dive into that together and say, okay, this is what's here. These are all the colors of nonlinear thinking. Now let's see how we can use that to come up with an answer because it, it, it has no use to empty the bucket of colors to a company and saying, you know, pick your color and go for it. We need to, we need to bring in a linear way the answer and the solution. Mm -hmm. And it's and for me, it's not about that everything should be nonlinear. This is a dance between two worlds. The whole world is linear. We're all trained to be linear. So that's been taken care of. And mm -hmm. AI is linear, and a lot of development is linear. And I think that human intelligence and nonlinear thinking is, is a kind of color. And, and I just bring that together. It's not that I'm against linear thinking. You should see my office, how it's well organized and my Excel sheets and my databases and, and everything and my, my calendar and organization. It's all very linear, but it's, I think it's, you know, bringing these two together Otherwise, it doesn't work because if you just have craziness and color and nonlinear thinking, you end up nowhere. So it's it's a dance between the two of them. So you go from deciding to be homeless 
to recreating your life, generating what appears to be a fascinating not-for-profit, but as you said, it, you know, still not making an income. What 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 is the transition point of? What if, mm -hmm. Yeah, what is your transition point now of making an income? Sometime. <laughs> there, there, there is no transition points. This is this is what it is. This is the beauty. This is this is the space where I want to be. Um, I'm very much a nonlinear thinker. I want to mm -hmm. be free, and I can only be free in a space like this because it's a nonprofit. There is no game about shares and who gets what, and right. you know, and grabbing and stabbing. If I can say that. This is beautiful. I've I've framed myself that I'm okay with not having anything. And that creates space for me that I feel comfortable with. So I don't need an income. I just need to be creative. I just need to be able to produce and connect with others. Income for me is irrelevant. As long as, you know, we have some food on the table, I'm fine. It's not about driving a Mercedes Benz. Would I like to drive a Mercedes Benz? Of course. You know, I would love to be sponsored by a Mercedes Benz, but it's 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 not about that. You know, happiness is something that you cannot manage. And we all think that we can because we feel happy always in retrospect. If something happens, makes us feel happy. And then we think, oh, mm -hmm. if we do that again, we will be happy again. Or when I live in a house like that, I will be happy. Or when I can buy the newest iPhone, I will be happy. But that's, you know, that's not how it works for me. I want to be close to happiness in all kinds of occasions. And I don't want to steer myself into happiness. Happiness is there anyway. And for me, being creative, using my brain, connecting with others, having huge challenges and and you know have the possibility to to do something different that's fascinating i want to live like that and i want to live you know the way that when i die my kids will say he was a weird motherfucker but oh my god did he do something awesome and that's a huge motivation for me so there will not be a transition point this is it this is the global nonprofit we're growing every day. We're meeting the most amazing people you can imagine. And we're creating change. And that energy is going on every day. And every day is a surprise. And every day something else happens that I cannot predict. And I feel like I'm I'm living completely in the now by not being busy what shareholders will think or if we get an investor or not. And all these other things. For what? You know, this is it for me. So what one other part of the, um, which I believe is part of the not-for-profit, um, it's called the Brain Forest Alliance. Um, how does that work and how do you connect with individuals to be part of that? When I created the Octopus Movement, it was all about humans, you know, finding a space where they can connect with each other and they don't have to wear a mask. You know, they can be completely themselves. How mm. weird it is, it doesn't matter. We have a lot of people in the space of neurodiversity in the octopus movement. Mm -hmm. So if you have ADHD or bipolar or you're on the spectrum, it doesn't matter. You can be yourself. There are no expectations. There are no rules. So it works like a beauty. You know, it's it's awesome to connect like that. But then I was thinking, but I think organizations want to be in this space as well. And, and that's the Brain Forest Alliance. So I was thinking, you know, how can we bring this nonlinearity into the business world? How can we transform leadership? How can we support the employees? And that's what's happening in the Brain Forest Alliance. So organizations become a member of the Brain Forest Alliance, and we work together with access to our think tank, the black box within the octopus movement. And we work together how we can create change. So it's the Brain Forest Alliance is the corporate side of the membership in the octopus movement. Got They're, it. Um, you know, um, 
they sponsor us, we work together, we do research together, we're, we're checking out how things can work and improve better. We're talking about leadership, HR, how to hire people, all these kind of things happens in the Brain Forest Alliance. And why a Brain Forest? Well, you know, makes sense. If we're talking about nonlinear thinking, then that's the place to go, I think. So we've been speaking with uh, Perry Knoppert. Um, you founded the Octopus Movement. It's amazing how fast 30 minutes can go. So Perry, I, I want to I end with one question for you. Um, is there one challenge on earth that you would love to be presented with? I would, so, one? <laughs> <laughs> what, give give, give one, me one. One. We have well, three minutes, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> one challenge. I would I would love to create the nonlinear manager. That's that's a challenge that I want to go after. It's a challenge where we could stop the linear system by pressing a button and reactivate it again when we're pressing the same button again. So mm -hmm. imagine you're a, a school and you have a nonlinear manager and a student comes in and there is a huge problem. Something is not working. How beautiful would it be that there is a nonlinear manager who can pause the system, pause the linear thinking and create a solution regardless of what's normal and what's not. Get this student back on track and when everything is okay again, then re reactivate the system for the students but also for you and me when we go to to the government and where something is happening and, and we can't control that and we're in trouble how many of us have heard it's out of our hands we cannot do anything that's how the system works i would love to challenge that and to create a new way of thinking maybe in leadership even to address that and, and create a new job description where you're able and have the, the power to pause the linear system to solve a few issues and then re it, reactivate it again to change someone's life. I would love that. It, it sounds like, you see, you got it down to one and it was an incredible one. And and I think the, the notion of the nonlinear manager is a fantastic one. So. Perry, thank you so much for joining us on Say Hi to the Future today. It's been it's been a pleasure. It's been a treat. Thank you, Listen. Ken. That was fast, 30 minutes. And I like to talk about the octopus movement. So for me, this was easy peasy. <laughs>